And good evening once again to you all, and welcome back to the Shadow Gallery. I am, as always, your host, James Donnelly, and tonight uh, we're not talking comics, so we're talking movies. Uh, we're talking about the movie that I saw tonight, uh, which is the film Drive, uh, which features, of course, uh, Ryan Gosling, uh, you know, kind of the new it boy uh, of Hollywood, um, at least certainly one of them. Uh, and, uh, you know, with a cast like Brian Cranston, uh, Christina Hendricks, uh, Ron Perlman, uh, uh, Carrie Mulligan, and uh, the great Albert Brooks. Um, and directed by uh, Nicholas Winding Refn, uh, who uh, uh, did... Uh, the Pusher Trilogy, uh, which is a uh, series of Danish films, I believe. Um, also did uh, the film Bronson with Tom Hardy, uh, which was a extraordinarily surreal film, uh, and has now done this film. Um, this film uh, got some great acclaim at the film festivals that it played at, and it's getting a lot of hype. Um, and believe me when I say that hype is absolutely 100% deserved. Uh, Drive is, at least so far, easily the best film of the year. Um, this is a... And probably a lot of you ha who have seen the reviews, read the reviews, what have you, uh, you, you see, you hear it being compared a great deal to, uh, you know, some of the, uh, the cool... Uh, 80s cinema, and not like the cheesy 80s action cinema or anything like that, but like the really cool. Uh, it's it has you know, uh, you know it has Michael Mann written all over it, and that's that's not a bad thing because uh, you know when you're dealing with films like uh, you know Michael Mann's Thief or uh, Manhunter, uh, which is an extraordinarily uh, extraordinarily underrated film, as is Thief. In my estimation, uh, these are films that are uh, there's a lot of long, you know, there's a lot of long takes, a lot of a lot of silent takes, uh, you know, very minimalistic, uh, very cultivating a, a very naturalistic vibe. Um, there's no, but there is a very sincere style to it, and a very specific style to it. Um, it's not. It doesn't. It, it it feels natural yet unnatural at the same time. Um, now, basically, what we have here, uh, Ryan Gosling uh, plays uh, the driver. He has no name in this film, and uh, he's you know, plot-wise, uh, you know, he's a part-time movie stuntman, part man, part-time mechanic, and part-time getaway driver. And uh, before you go see this, don't get to thinking that this is going to be a film like uh, Ronin or some of the Bourne films, uh, where it's a lot of car chases. Um, get that right out of your head, because uh, there's only one uh, real car chase sequence in this film. It's pretty brief, but it's uh, extraordinarily well done, and it's very much to the point. Um, and his uh, his neighbor in uh, his little kind of uh, dank apartment in Echo Park in Los Angeles uh, is uh, you know the lovely uh, Carrie Mulligan who I've uh, adored uh, ever since I first saw her in an education in which she's absolutely brilliant um, and also was. Uh, equally brilliant in a very, very little scene film called Never Let Me Go. Um, anyway, uh, he's very much taken with her and her uh, young son, um, and he is trying to get into the, uh, the racing business, uh, not the Fast and Furious racing, but actual, like, uh, stock car racing. Uh, Brian Cranston, uh, who is kind of his mentor, uh, and also uh, sort of his boss, sort of his partner, um, uh, he goes into business, uh, he basically takes out a loan from a, a local mobster uh, 
a Bernie played by Albert Brooks, uh, whose best uh, whose best buddy uh, is uh, Nino, uh, played by Ron Perlman. There's some really funny jokes uh, that that they have between each other about you know. Uh, you know, you just kind of have to see it uh, because they're, you know, they're both Jewish um, and, you know, one of them owns a pizzeria and, you know, it, it, there's just some, inter there's some interesting riffs that they both have. Anyway, um, so her husband, uh, Carrie Mulligan's husband, um, is, has just gotten out of prison uh, after they've kind of had these very uh, intimate but non, you know, non-sexual, you know, nothing sexual uh, to it at all moments between them. And then the husband, uh, Oscar, played by Oscar Isaac, uh, the character Standard, um, he gets out of prison um, and he's immediately leaned on uh, to pull off this heist. Um, and it's just, you know, it seems like a simple heist to pay back some protection money from when he was in prison. Um, because uh, he, because Ryan's character cares very much for the welfare of uh, Carrie Mulligan and the, and the son, he decides to uh, do a you know do a driving gig where he takes them to uh, uh, to this uh, you know si simple pawn shop robbery, and of course it's not simple, um, and that's you know pretty much where the film, the, uh, the action of the film takes off, uh, because there's, uh, there's forward momentum going on, whether it's the intimate scenes near the beginning or the, you know, kind of action, more action-based scenes that start from the robbery on. Uh, like I said, uh, the whole film screams 1980s Michael Mann, you know, like I said, Thief, Manhunter, Miami Vice, even, uh, you know, in the, even the fact that they have that kind of pink uh, cursive uh, writing is very telling for what they, or what they're trying to do, what they're trying, the era that they're trying to capture with this film. I mean, even the clothes are not modern. Uh, you know, the, some of the cars are, yes, but, you know, like I said, it's very much cultivating that, 80, you know, this, that cool 80s vibe. Um, it's, I mean, <laughs> there's just not enough that I can say about this film and how incredibly good it is. Um, Ryan Gosling, his character, there's, you know, the, you know, just the word drive in and of itself is a homonym in this film. It's, you know, it, it, do, it doesn't only represent what he does, but it represents how he lives his life. Um, everything is in forward motion. Um, and he has uh, these, you know, these very quiet and, you know, and tender moments between himself and, and Carrie Mulligan. And then he has these, uh, like, blinding outbursts of violence. Not, uh, uh, you know, not, not towards... Uh, you know, kind of like the good guys in the film, but certainly the bad guys. Um, uh, one of the things that have become somewhat controversial about this film is the violence. Um, when it is present, it's extremely bracing. Uh, it's incredibly graphic, not for its content, but just for, well, there are, to be certain, some scenes that are extraordinarily graphic, uh, but there are some scenes where the violence is much more implied, and you don't really see what's going on, you know, kind of what happens, but then you do, uh, for just a second, you know. Uh, in particular, if you've seen it, you know, you know the scene in the elevator, um, which is... Uh, incredibly uh, violent scene, uh, and but it's more of it's it's kind of like a psycho type of graphic uh, in this you know in the sense that you don't really see uh, any actual uh, vi you know you don't see any actual of the stuff that's going on you just hear it 
and uh, it's the the gunshots in this film when guns are being fired, which is not very often, are probably the loudest gunshots that I've ever heard in a film. And that's not to uh, that's not to say that they're maybe even louder than they would be in a normal film, although I think they are amped up a little bit, but it is because of the quiet that precedes them. Um, because when it is violent, it's very, it's very sudden, it's very in your face, and it's, you know, and it's, it's just very, it's, it's very shocking. It's, it plays like how actual violence seems like it would happen if it's, you know, if it happens in real life. Uh, the performances, Ryan Gosling is terrific, you know, as a man of very few words, he, d he lets his actions speak way louder than any word that he could ever utter. Uh, Brian Cranston is great, as per usual, I've been watching a lot of Breaking Bad lately. Um, he's, it's a smallish character, but it's substantial. Uh, Carrie Mulligan, of, you know, always terrific, always, you know, uh, not really a whole lot to work with in here. Um, it's kind of the same with Ron Perlman. His role is kind of marginalized, uh, but it's very important. Uh, the one real kind of quibble here is Christina Hendricks. Um, doesn't get much screen time, doesn't have much to do, um, but I'm just glad that she's in something uh, like this, uh, you know, because I've, I've been kind of in love with her <laughs> ever since, uh, you know, ever since Firefly and where she played uh, Saffron or Yolanda, uh, you know, depending upon who you ask. Anyway, um, but the real, uh, the real scene stealer here, the real, uh, you know, almost shoe in at least for a uh, uh, best supporting uh, actor nod is uh, is Albert Brooks. Uh, his character is incredible. It's it's he is one of the uh, he he's a very effective villain because he's not one of those screaming, crazy, ranting villains, but nor is he like a, uh, uh, like a, like a Hannibal Lecter kind of quiet uh, villain. He's just, it, the violence in the film is very, very matter of fact. And the acts that he performs uh, in this role are just, you know what, this is something I gotta do, I'm gonna do it. That's it. And you know, and that's all there is. But that, that's even scarier uh, when it is that kind of calculated. Um, and just, it's a role that you would never, ever think that someone like Albert Brooks would ever even take, let alone play. And uh, so, I mean, incredibly inspired casting on the part of uh, Nicholas Wine and Ruffin. Uh, the score by Cliff Martinez, uh, definitely uh, evocative of um, of like, you know, the soundtrack from Thief, you know, which is by Tangerine Dream, it has this very kind of pseudo ethereal kind of quality to it. Uh, there are some songs, and it's one of those films, again, like, you know, uh, of Michael Mann's films, where songs play throughout certain sequences, and they kind of, and they narrate uh, more the mood rather than exactly what you're seeing. He directs this film with such uh, with such verve and such uh, verisimilitude, um, and with such style and grace and beauty, even in its most violent moments. Um, you just have to just sit there and be in awe of it. Um, the writing is very tight. Uh, Hussein Amini, who wrote the script uh, based on a book, uh, I mean it's just. Everything about the film is pretty much perfect. It's pretty much the best, you know, it's pretty much the coolest thing that you'd want to see at the movies right now. And that's what it is. It's the epitome of cool. It's the epitome of cool, like, 80s, noir, like, neo-noir. And I just can't say enough good things about it. Easily 10 out of 10. Uh, easily the best film of the year so far. Uh, go see it if you have the means. Get, you know, as soon as you, you know, as soon as you watch this video, get in your car, go see it. It's that great. So that's it tonight for the Shadow Gallery. You know, thumbs up, thumbs down, subscribe, comment, please. Want to hear from you. Uh, and that's it. So have a great night, and we'll see you again next time.